and read the word of God in verse in chapter 13. Revelations chapter 13. And the word of God reads this way. And I stood upon the sands of the sea and saw a beast rising out the sea having seven heads and ten horns and upon the horns ten crowns and upon the head the name blasphemy and the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard and his feet were as the feet of a bear and his mouth as the mouth of a lion and the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority and I saw one of his head as if it were wounded to death and his deadly wounds was healed and all the world wandered after the beast and they worshiped the dragon which gave power unto the beast. And they worshiped the beast saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies. And power was given unto him to continue forty and two months. And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name his and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations and all that dwells upon the earth shall worship him whose names are not written in the book of life of the lamb slain from the foundation of the earth if any man have an ear let him hear he that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killed with a sword must be killed by the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. And I beheld another beast coming out of the earth and he had two horns like a lamb and he spake as a dragon and he exercised all the powers of the first beast before him and caused the earth and them which dwell for him to worship the first beast whose deadly wounds was healed and he doeth great wonders so that he makes fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men and he deceived them that dwells on the earth by means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast saying to them that dwells in the earth that they should make an image to the beast which had a wound by sword and did live and he had power to give life unto the image of the beast that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed and he caused all but small and great rich and poor free and bond to receive a mark in their right hand or in their forehead and that no man might buy or sell save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name here is wisdom let him 
that have understanding count the number of the beast. For it is the number of a man. And his number is six hundred, three scores and six. Let us pray. Almighty God, we come to you in the name of Jesus. That you purge our heart, dear Lord Jesus, to stand in the gap for righteousness. That we shall have an ear to hear what the truth is, what the truth is saying to the churches. Lord Jesus, we ask that you have mercy on us as we come to you in repentance for all the sins that we have committed. Lord Jesus, we ask that the hearts of men will receive this word and that it will purge their hearts then into repentance. This is my prayer, dear Lord Jesus, in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. He that have an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the churches. I would like to continue this series of scripture in the book of Revelation and show you we are closer to rapture than you think. Here in God's prophet word, prophetic word, Apostle John received a revelation from God in a vision while in prison at the island of Patmos off the coast of Asia Minor where John was banished for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. How many of you are willing to go to prison and be banished for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ? How many of you are willing? If I were to conduct a survey and ask the same question, very few of you would say yes and mean it. In this book, the word revealed unto us the great apocal event, the manifestation of Satan or the Antichrist. Let me read verse 1, 2, and 3 once again. And I stood upon the sea, the sands of the sea, and saw a beast rise out of the sea, having seven heads and the ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his head the name Blasphemy. And the beast which I saw was like a leopard, and his feet was like the feet of a bear, and the mouth as a mouth of a lion, and the dragon gave him his power, and his seat, and great authority. And I saw one of his head, as if it were wounded in death, his deadly wounds were healed, and all the world wandered after the beast. In the vision, John see himself standing upon the sands of the sea. And he sees the beast rise out of the sea. And it has seven heads and, and ten horns. And upon the horns, ten crowns. Upon the, his head, and the name blasphemy. The seven head beast represent the seven kings or seven kingdoms of the Antichrist or false Christ. The ten horns represent ten nations under the control of the Antichrist arising out of the old. In the past we call it the Roman Empire. Today we call it the European Union which is the new Roman Empire of the new world order and which are the superpowers of today. John continues as he describes the power of the Antichrist like unto leopards with feet of a bear and mouth like a lion and a dragon which is Satan gave the Antichrist power to rule the United Nations and European unions. But the ten horns are what? They're Britain, Great Britain, France, Spain, Italy, Germany, Greece, Turkey, Syria, Egypt, Iraq, and Iran. What? Iran? Yes, Iran. Remember, of the Persian Empire of the past, well, the Persian Empire is still here. 
Ever wonder why the U.S. haven't invaded Iran, but invaded Iraq, Iraq instead? Iran is the one of the kingdoms of the mountains and part of the Antichrist. The U.S. would never be allowed to invade Iran without the permission of the European Union. The horns also represent the power of superpowers. Notice the United States is not mentioned in this list so far. Why the U.S. have no historic? Because the United States have no historic connection to the mountain kings and according to the book of Daniel. The U.S. is a new power. In the verse 3, the Antichrist was wounded into, unto death. And his wounds were healed. And he lived. Here John showed us the abomination of paganism. And the healing it represents the paganism is making a comeback in the United States, Europe, if not all over the world. And Christianity is on a significant decline. And with paganism, you have Wiccans, you have the orgies, you have homosexuality taking over the very roots of man. If not, then the world is also in the United States. And all the perversion of our making a comeback around the world. And we totally disregard Jesus Christ. Today, the definition of marriage is under attack by a Democratic-filled Congress and a Democratic president that will that will vote for the lead and who is voting to lead and leading the charge for change. We can't make excuses and blame George Bush. We look to the wrong man, and some of us blaspheme looking to President Obama as some Messiah for change. Now change is coming fast. We asked for it and now we got it. Not only he said with the with the uh, sided with the abomination, he will sign into law this week the hate bill that protect these people of abomination and many of you will be sent into prison. You will be sent into exile for speaking against the behavior of this abomination. Your children cannot receive teachings of Christ or learn the history of Christ in your government-run public schools, but they can have sex education, learn to accept homosexual, and have an um, abortion without you knowing it. Not to mention, we will unlock, don't ask, don't tell, now you have a man dressing as a woman being in a female barracks or a male barracks in a form of anything goes military. You may have no problem with the with the of a man being cross dressed or homosexual in the military coming out full force. But I'm here to tell you a godly soldier will have a problem. The very one who's protecting you will have a problem. The very core of our military will crumble. Our nation has become a nation of the Antichrist. Don't believe me? Go to your nearest public school. Get a job there and start praying. And watch that you will, not be, that you will be arrested and thrown into prison. Go up to someone and say it is wrong to be a gay and it is a sin and if we sin you must repent for your sin if you call yourself a Christian. Watch that the FBI will come to your house and take you away. We the people of the United States of America have turned our backs on the very God we claimed to believe in. We now fall into to the same categories as Sodom and Gomorrah. We will be judged and cast into the fiery pits of hell for our actions. And that's all of us. That's including all the churches. For their sins of acceptance and not taking a stand for Jesus. Now the blood's in your hands. 
Verse 4 talks about how the people will worship the dragon, the superpower man, which gives power to the, to the beast who is the Antichrist. And they worship the, the beast, saying, Who is like unto the other beast? Who is able to make war with him? And they will all be giving him a mouth, speaking great things and blasphemy, and power given unto him to continue for 40 and two months. My friends, that's three years and six months. The people will be so deceived that many of you, your families, your friends, will worship and honor Satan who give power to the Antichrist. Matter of fact, you already have. No one stood in, up in unity to stop the government from taking prayer out of schools. No one screamed at the blasphemy of misinterpretation of scripture. No one screamed when a woman was allowed on the pulpit to lead as a pastor against the very scripture of God. No one screamed blasphemy when gays and lesbians assumed their authority over the pulpit. No one screamed at the institution where a priest could not marry. No one screamed when corporations kept their doors open on Sunday, keeping you, brothers and sisters, out of the church of worship where you cannot, where you can receive the word truth. Faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. But if I can keep you from hearing, you will not have faith and you will not believe in God. Whenever the devil speaks, everyone says, it's okay. And guess what, America? You said it is okay. Church of the United States of America, Europe, Japan, Asia has said it is okay. And if you said it's okay, then you have sided yourself with an abomination and you will be judged. Now we have a man who holds the power of the world in his hands and no one don't know too much about him or where he's truly born. He's been in office less than one year, and he already received a Nobel Peace Prize. Brothers and sisters, open your eyes. Drink the coffees. Something is not right here. So what he speak eloquently? Didn't the word of God warn us about this? Matthew 7, 15 through 16 warns of Jesus said, Beware of the false prophet. Watch which comes to you in sheep clothing. Be it, but inward they are raving wolves. You shall know them by their fruit. Do men gather grapes and thorns and figs of thistles? Folks of God, please read your Bible. Pick up the word of God. Ask God to give you a revelation. Ask God to give you understanding. Ask God to open your eyes. Matthew 24 11 and many false prophets shall rap and shall deceive many 2nd Peter 2 chapter 2 verse 17 and 19 these are the well without water clouds are carried with the tempest to whom the mist darkness is reserved forever the false leader the false teacher the antichrist have no word in them they will deceive you but you in darkness, meaning lack of understanding forever, a false teacher, a false leader, the Antichrist, will give you hype, emotions, emotional highs, one scripture or less, if not at all, but spiritual bondage on you, and will not lift up the finger to help anyone who is in need. And you are so happy that you haven't learned a thing, and you couldn't see between the forest and the trees. Verse 18 of, of St. Peter's chapter 2. For when they speak great swelling words of vanity, they are lured through the lust of the flesh, 
through much wantedness, though there were clean, clean escape from those who live in error. While they promise them liberty, they themselves are the servants of corruption. Come on, saints. For of those whom a man is overcome of the same is he brought into bondage. Doesn't the scripture tell you anything, saints? This is happening right now. This is happening right now in the White House. This is happening right now in Congress. This is happening right now in our governor. Look at the governors. All have been caught in the cookie jar of corruption, of, of, of blasphemy, and of all sorts of sins. But yet, you have not opened your eyes. We got a governor in New York. Blasphemy with sexual relationship with one of his staff ministers. Another one in Jer Jer New Jersey committed a sexual sin. The one in South Carolina who committed a blasphemy of sexual sin. What more do you want? It's right there in front of you. And yet you do not see between the forest and the trees what is wrong. That is wrong and is definitely going to lead you into sin. What is that you don't see? Why are you saying it's still okay? Turn to Titus chapter 10, verse 11 and 16. We're going to read verse chapter 10. We're going to read Titus, amen? Titus 10, verse 10 and 11, and we'll read 16. For these are many unruly and vain talkers and deceivers, especially them of the circumcision. Verse 11, whose mouth must be stopped, who serve in whole houses, teaching things which are not for filthy lark's sake. Verse 16, they profess that they knew God, but in work they deny him, being abominable and disobedient and the very good word reprobated. And what is larceny? Larceny means nothing more than greed. Reprobate means rejecting of God's word. Refusing to have God in their knowledge. You ask Obama how he ever talk about God, talk about Jesus. To ask him a question. Yeah, man, he'll dodge and duck that thing so fast you wouldn't even notice it. First John, beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirit whether they are God, because many false prophets are gone out in the world. You got these false teachers confusing you, and now you got your congressmen, you got your teachers in public schools, you got your neighbor confusing you, because you will not return to the word of God and stay on it. Saints of God, we got to be careful where we're accepting our leadership from. Verse 7 of Revelation, uh, verse 11 of Revelations. And it was given unto him, make war with the saints. And overcome them with power. Giving him over all kindreds and tongues and nation. And all that dwells upon the earth shall worship him. Whose names are not written in the book of life of the lamb slain from the foundation of the earth. Of the world. Verse 9. If any man have an ear, let him here. Yes, saints of God, war has been declared upon the saints. Verse 10. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that kills with the sword must be killed with the sword. He is patient and the faith of the saints. And he exercises all the power of the first beef before him and cause the earth and them that dwells which dwell in the realm to worship the first beast whose deadly wounds was healed and he goes great does great wonders so that he make fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of man now this beast has no crown this beast of Satan has two horns which represents the United States of America. This beast is deceiving you. It deceived me, myself, 
and my family. And we're going to suffer God's judgment as long as we continued as business as usual. Each of us are charged to witness Christ to all people, even when there's a law on the books against it. Why are we not witnessing to our gay friends to repent, sin no more, confess Christ, asking them to turn from their wicked ways? Because we don't want to lose our jobs, our friends, our families. We don't even want speak of people to speak evil against us. We just want to accept anything goes, and as long as everything's fine, I'm fine. Let me ask you something. Do you want your friends, family, sons, and daughters to go to heaven, or do you really want them to go to hell? If a friend was about to commit suicide, wouldn't you do whatever it takes to save them? If your child is about to be killed or dying, wouldn't you have done everything possible to save them? Then why not the unsaved? 14, 15, 16. And deceive them that dwells on the earth by means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast saying to them that dwells on the earth that they should make the image of the beast which had the wounds of the, uh, by the sword and did live. And he had the power to give life unto the image of the beast that the image of the beast should both speak cause that as many as would, would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. And he caused all but both small and great rich and poor free and bond to receive a mark on their right hands and their forehead. Let me ask you something, saying there's an first of all there's an economic problem in this country. So we try and look for a savior who's going to promise economic growth. We're looking for the Democrat party. I don't care if Republican party it doesn't matter to me. You're looking for an outside source to heal your wounds, to make you feel good. You want to say people say there's no jobs, then you all believe there's no jobs. There are jobs out here. There are jobs out here, and you all being totally beguiled. You listen to your propaganda ministry news media, and you believe every tongue and center, whatever they say. If they say the moon is upside down, you believe that hook, line, and sinker. If you, they say the economy is going to get better with under a new commander and chief new president, guess what? You believe that sales pitch. And guess what? You're going to be judged by that sales pitch. Have anyone have you ever considered those who died in your behalf for the faith? Many today are all over the world are standing in the gap for you, praying for you, and don't even own a dime, don't live in no car house with air conditioning or heating, don't have a car, don't have a job that pays anything, but they're praying for you. Many of them refuse the lifestyle from the beast and are serving time in harsh prison conditions. Some are put to death, forced to beg in the street, while others face daily persecution and paying high taxes because of their Christian faith. And yet we allow the beast to take over our children, our family, and yet, yes, yes, our souls as well. And we're talking about, for the Lord I live, for the Lord I die. You don't mean it. Stop lying to yourself. You don't mean it. If you did, you'd been up in arms with me. When, when are we going to be set apart to do the will of God? And stop playing politics. And stop playing rituals in the church. When are when are these such these so much blasphemy? What are you know we're surrounded with so much blasphemy all around us, and we do absolutely nothing. It takes people to make a change. You remember change during the campaign? Many of us were drawn to the 
yes we can theme and the change theme. But what about the theme that stand the test of time? The change millions and billions of people live forever. I can do all things through Christ which strengthened me. This is nothing new. Repent and take a stand for Christ. Repent, we take a stand for Christ. Repent, repent, repent. Saints of God. I would like to thank each and every one of you for standing with me today. But what I'm about to say is with faint heart and sadness. I realize the word of God is no longer a priority in my family, my home community, and my home nation. Christianity has stooped into a level of lukewarm, feel good, and an acceptance of anything goes but Jesus and his laws, epistles, and for what he died for. Satan has won this battle. But since no one desires to hear from a man of God, such as myself, then there is no need for me to proclaim the good news amongst you any further. As of October 13th, 2009, I, your friend in Christ, Antonio Arnold, will no longer preach the gospel of Jesus Christ to people who no longer loves Christ. I will no longer affiliate myself with any branch of Zion of damnation who do not follow the true teaching of Christ. Those who are students in Alpha, in this Alpha and Omega School of Biblical Studies will be able to complete their course and receive their certificates. But there will be no new registrations. I am no longer to be called Reverend and Dr. Antonio Arnold, but just Antonio Arnold, who will hold himself separate from the rest of the false Christians in the United States and the world. I pray God wisdom will be upon you, and may the Lord bless you, and may heaven smile upon you. Farewell.